I would say that uh, local content, if defined as a national level local content, meaning that workers uh, should be nationals from that country, though not necessarily from that locality, and meaning that goods and services should be provided by the national economy and not necessarily from the regional or local economies, uh, I think it's in general term a good idea. Uh, now, the uh, concrete experience says that uh, such an attempt has only been made partially and only in some countries. Uh, in Bolivia, for example, there are provisions that uh, establish that companies in the hydrocarbon sector have to employ a certain percentage of Bolivian nationals. Uh, in Colombia, uh, there are there is a legislation that says the same about uh, laborers, no? Uh, in, in, in local in, in mining and oil operations that need to be from that the locality where the where the activity uh, happens uh, uh, to take place. Uh, in Brazil, the experience is uh, much more ambitious uh, because uh, the focus is not on labor but on the provision of goods and services. So, for example, when Presal came about, uh, the established policy was that I think up to 60% of all goods and services uh, to be consumed by the productive processes, the extraction and the Processes in the oil for the internal market or for exports needed to be provided by uh, Brazilian uh, companies or companies established and actually operating in Brazil. No, but then also you also have a number of other countries that have no provisions whatsoever. For example, in Peru, that's a field that is uh, completely unregulated. Even in Colombia and in Bolivia, you have regulations pertaining labor, but you don't have any regulation. Uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, goods and, and, and services provided to these industries. No? So, it is not that there is a lot of experience. It is not that you have a wide array of countries and situations in which different policies have been implemented and then therefore you have a lot of material to evaluate and to extract conclusions. Now, you can also, even say that you have countries in which <clears throat> you have had like de facto local country strategies implemented by the companies themselves or responded to market impulses that, that were not planned for uh, or were not the result of a planned policy, which is the case of Chile, no? The, the, the whole development of a service industry around the mining compounds in northern Chile is not something that is established by the law. It's something that ended up being convenient for the mining companies, no? And it is also because you had uh, investors in Chile that were willing to explore that field of opportunity and, and effectively to develop uh, capacities uh, to provide that kind of goods and services. No? So the, the experience is very, very diverse, I mean, so it is very difficult to extract one single conclusion about the, the good and the bad of these policies. So it's a tricky question, but uh, in my opinion, local content frameworks between Latin America and Africa differ more than they look alike, at least for the time being. This is because the Latin American uh, industrialized development is on average more advanced than uh, that of Africa. Many Latin American countries have now relaxed the mandatory targets that African countries are still stipulating in their legal frameworks. Latin American countries have also evolved uh, towards R&D uh, and the construction of an international uh, competitive supply chain. This is um, more the focus of the local content policies right now. 
And um, the additional focus is that uh, government support is given uh, for market-driven partnerships between companies and suppliers. A typical example is uh, these mining companies led suppliers development programs in Brazil, Chile, or Peru, whereby suppliers are invited to offer innovative solutions to the recurrent problems of the mining sector. And the most successful ones are then offered to serve the international network of subsidiaries of these mining firms. Africa uh, has a lot of uh, hard and monetary targets on local content, but they have recently uh, changed their focus in the last five to six years. They have changed their focus, shifting from an emphasis on local ownership to a focus on local value added, which is a very important move. And um, authors, famous authors and development economists uh, like Morris have said that uh, a focus on local ownership only contributes to the localization of the import function. In my opinion, but I think uh, the field will agree, successful local content frameworks are characterized by six aspects. Um, the first one, local content has to be part of a wider vision and strategy of value-added creation and competitiveness. This strategy should lead to a clear and coherent legal framework around local content. For instance, import duties they are often waived for foreign companies, but they are not waived for locals. Or they are waived for foreign companies on goods that could be produced locally. So all of this discourages local producers and local production. The second aspect, the process of local content policy formulation and monitoring, not to forget monitoring, has to be transparent and backed by strong accountable and really often dedicated institutions. Three, there should be realism in the setting of local content targets. Those targets should be grounded in the sector's procurement needs as well as, as, well as in the analysis of the local capabilities. And these targets should be modified as conditions change over time. Four, there should be a gradual phasing in of local content policies to allow for industrial development and gradual scale up of capacities. Five, there should also be a gradual phasing out um, of local content policies to avoid the entrenchment of special interest that prosper only thanks to regulatory barriers created by local content policies. And six, um, the, the, do, the, the domestic, economy, domestic economy constraints should be addressed. Um, the local suppliers' constraints, the lack of infrastructure, lack of access to finance, um, the, the lack of access to technological, technological support and lack of access to information, all of this need to be addressed by the government primarily, but in collaboration with the companies. The government should also prioritize support to innovation, R&D, and development of capabilities. And I think uh, measuring the effectiveness of local content legal framework is not, or, or just policy, is not an easy task, even that they are often part of a large spectrum of economic policies. And moreover, as I just mentioned in the previous question, their impact also depends on some preconditions or enabling factors that relate to the domestic economy constraints. However, we can say that throughout these stories, the case studies have shown that local content policies have a trigger effect, in particular in countries with industrial basis, with, sorry, weak industrial basis.